Hello and welcome to People's Voice, where true stories touch deep emotions. Today, we delved into, GF cheated with her boss, I left her alone, and now she wants to come back to me. Come, let's explore these real-life stories. I'm a 23-year-old guy, and last night I had a gut-wrenching feeling that my 22-year-old girlfriend might have cheated on me with her much older boss, who was in his 50s. We've been together for about a year and a half and this situation has left me feeling incredibly anxious. The whole thing started with a company event that had been planned for weeks. She was super excited about it and spent a lot of time picking out a flirty outfit. She told me everyone from the company would be there, so I had no reason to doubt her. She left for the event after work, and the last text I got from her was a couple of hours before it was supposed to start. She assured me she wouldn't be too long and promised to text me when she was leaving, but as the night wore on, I heard nothing from her. The weather was pretty bad, so I asked her to keep me updated, just to make sure she was safe. Several hours passed, and still no word from her. At this point, I was getting really anxious, so I decided to reach out to her sister, who also works closely with her boss. I asked if she had heard from my girlfriend at all during or before the party. That's when things took a troubling turn. Her sister told me that her boss claimed the party got cancelled because of the weather, but she also mentioned something that made my heart sink. Her boss was going out to dinner with someone. That's when I started to feel really uneasy. I couldn't help but dig a little deeper, so I checked her email, which I know wasn't the best move, but I needed to know, and there it was, an email from her boss forwarding her the reservation details for their Christmas party. They were planning to meet up at a couple of bars in a city an hour away, and then head to a super fancy restaurant for a very private evening. At that point, I was convinced something was going on. I was really nervous, but there wasn't much I could do about it, so I tried to get some sleep. She eventually stumbled in around 1.30 in the morning, clearly intoxicated or under the influence of something. It was a rough night, and I couldn't shake the feeling that something had gone terribly wrong. This morning, I woke up with a pit in my stomach, and things took a dark turn from there. In the bathroom, I found her clothes from last night. I'm not proud of it, but I couldn't help myself, I checked her pockets, hoping for answers. Sadly, there was nothing there, but as I examined the clothes, I couldn't ignore the undeniable signs. Her panties were tangled among the other garments, reeking of sweat and, well, intimacy. There were clear signs of intimate residue and unmistakable fluid stains. It hit me like a ton of bricks, and I couldn't wrap my head around it. I always thought everything was fine between us. She never expressed any unhappiness, and she didn't complain incessantly about work. I've tried my best to be the perfect boyfriend, supporting her hobbies and career, loving her with all my heart. So, this betrayal blindsided me. The silver lining is that she's not on the lease and I'm not financially responsible for her bills. However, her stuff is all over our apartment, and I won't be helping her pack. I sent her a text telling her I know what happened last night, and that if she wants to talk, she can meet me at a restaurant between 12 and 1. If not, it doesn't matter to me, after that, she's evicted from my life. Here's the kicker, her boss owns the company, which I forgot to mention earlier, so there's no HR to turn to. He is HR. He's also unmarried and gives off that creepy vibe. I've only met him a few times before this, but something about him never sat right with me. He was always courteous to me, and we exchanged small talk. Now, he's the one who had an affair with my now ex-girlfriend. When she showed up at the restaurant, the encounter took an unexpected turn. I had braced myself for tears, maybe some bargaining, and an emotional breakdown, but what actually happened was nothing like that. She walked in calmly and confidently, almost appearing proud of herself as she took her seat. I couldn't help but look at her and ask, well, what do you have to say for yourself? What I got was a brutally honest confession that I wasn't prepared for. In a nutshell, she admitted to cheating because she wanted to. She wanted someone different, and she didn't mince words. She said, it got boring between us, and I wanted something new. I knew what I was doing. I had to ask her if she had been drunk that night, to which she replied, of course, I did. 
I got drunker than I've ever been in my life, ever. Then came the most painful question of all, did she intend to hurt me? Her response cut deep. She said, on the surface, no, but I guess somewhere deep inside, subconsciously, yeah. I couldn't help but probe further, asking how long this had been going on. She revealed that while the night before was the first time they had been intimate, they had been fooling around ever since he started working there a year ago. That revelation hit me like a ton of bricks. Just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, at that moment, I could sense that this charade was pointless, and I needed to exit before getting hurt even more. There was no reason to continue this painful exchange. I had no intention of finishing my meal, so I leaned in and delivered a firm ultimatum, you have until tonight to get your stuff out of my place, or it's hitting the curb, every last piece of it. With that, I left the restaurant, leaving behind a chapter of my life that had crumbled in a matter of hours. Now, I find myself back at work, grappling with the surreal feeling of one solid cornerstone of my life eroding before my eyes. Emotions will inevitably surge, and that's when the rail journey begins. It's almost surreal how swiftly everything changed, but there's more to the story. She has attempted to contact me several times since that fateful evening. The first message arrived on a Friday evening, claiming that she had retrieved all her belongings from my place and would cease further contact. I was actually home when that message came in, and the first thought that crossed my mind was the famous so much space for activities seen from Step Brothers. That Friday night, for reasons everyone can understand, I went out on the town with some close friends. We suited up and hit the downtown scene, only to run into a bunch of her friends. Initially awkward, the situation quickly smoothed over as conversations unfolded. The topic of what exactly transpired couldn't be avoided. According to my ex's version, I was the one cheating on her, and her boss was merely providing comfort. They found solace in each other while I was supposedly having an affair. Discovering they were better off together, I couldn't let that stand and took the liberty of setting the record straight, complete with emails and texts from her sister as evidence. My friends were left dumbfounded by the whole situation. One of them even called her on the spot to confront her about it and call her out on her falsehoods. It was a refreshing moment of clarity. The rest of the night was relatively uneventful. We wrapped it up by having a few friends over, ordered a crave case, and watched Step Brothers, finding humor and solace in the absurdity of it all. Saturday was a day inundated with missed text messages, all from her, spanning from accusations of talking poorly about her to claims of mistreatment. She pleaded for a conversation, but I chose to ignore them and continued with my day. I did receive a few messages from her family members inquiring about what had transpired. It turned out they had been fed the same story her friends were told. I responded to most of them, as I figured the truth would eventually surface. There were no hard feelings for many of her family members, her mom even called me to apologize for her daughter's actions, which was a comforting gesture. I spent most of the day with my family, sharing the unfortunate news. Everyone had liked her, so most were visibly upset. Sunday, however, marked the true D-Day. She showed up unannounced in the early afternoon, asking if she could come in to apologize. She claimed to have a list of personal issues she wanted to address, going back to the beginning of our relationship. Her appearance told a tale of sleepless nights, no makeup, and an apparent lack of hygiene since she had left. Some pity stirred within me, and with the freezing weather outside, I allowed her in. She began by sobbing uncontrollably, expressing profound remorse for everything that had unfolded. Curled up in the fetal position in my chair, she cried for what felt like an eternity. Eventually, she regained her composure, and we began discussing the real reason she was there. She confessed to a lifelong pattern of self-sabotage, a tendency she couldn't explain but acknowledged. She also disclosed issues with paranoia and trust that I had never suspected or been told about throughout our year and a half together. She claimed she felt our relationship was too perfect, and that she needed to make it more real. I was brutally honest about my own state of mind. I told her that I was doing remarkably well, filled with optimism about the future and eager to see where life would take me. This confession hit her hard, and she burst into tears once more. I questioned why she was so affected, and that's when she revealed the extent of her predicament. Her sister had kicked her out upon discovering the truth, her parents wouldn't let her stay with them, and by the time her friends found out, 
they too had refused to offer her shelter. Left with no alternatives, she turned to her boss, but according to her, he rejected her, stating that he had only been interested when she was in her prime, and her current situation had turned him off. In just a matter of two days, everyone in her life had cast her aside, explaining her disheveled appearance, lack of clean clothes, and desperation. And then she uttered the words that left me astounded, would it be alright if I stayed with you for a few days, just to get back on my feet? I won't be in the way, I promise. I was at a loss for words, utterly dumbfounded by the surreal absurdity of the situation. I took a few moments to collect my thoughts and finally responded with a resolute no. She teared up once more, mumbled something about a few, and abruptly departed. If you love the story and crave more tales of love, betrayal, and healing, don't forget to subscribe for more from Cheating Stories.